Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul, a watchman on the wall for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a beautiful Saturday. Hi, Ruby Doo. And the Misty, too. Got my dogs with me. Had to get away from the noise. We got some noise happening. Oh, no. And uh, I got an update that I, I, I'm just... Okay. Alpha dogs. I thought I'd have rubbed it but Misty too. Misty can't jump up because of her knee. Okay. Doggy time over. I got. We gotta do this. Um, we got water back here too. <laughs> There's water all throughout the house for my doggies. And get Misty. Oh, Misty, dude. The lover too. Okay. We got cameos happening. We got my vows in the background that I read every day. I read my vows every day that I took. Uh, I'm just holding this thing upside my head. There's my vows. Life is short. My wife and I hand wrote out vows and we rededicated our. They call that. Uh, we rededicated our vows. 2007, been married 20 years. We just came out from doing the work of the Lord. And I want to share the work of the Lord. And then I want to show you something at the end of this video. I'll try to make it quick. Excitement is running through my bones. And that's why. So, we go out today to do the homeless outreach. And you know, everybody know this is a seasonal thing for us. This is not a homeless ministry. But it's on my heart to do this. And it's a seasonal thing. This is our eight year, and we do it October through December. So it's just a seasonal thing. Uh, it should be done year round. There are people that do that. That that's not that's not my calling. It's just right now it's a burning passion of mine more than ever. So we went out and, and hit it again today. Um, there's this one guy I've been mean, kept trying to catch. He lives under a bridge and. Uh, Every time I drive by the bridge, there's no place to park and traffic trying to gonna run me over and run me off the road. And uh, so <clears throat> my wife was driving this time and we went out together. And um, and so I said, there he is. And uh, and we were able to park safely. And I jumped out and I ran over and introduced myself. My name is Minister Paul, prayed with him, gave him a, we, we have warm meals with us and gave him a warm meal lives there, sleeping back, literally lives under a bridge. Can anybody hear me? There's people living under bridges, and those are the people that got it good. And um, so we reached him, and he said, this is what he said, God bless you, you have a heart of gold. He was about 50 years old, my age. And I said, shouldn't we all? And so let's fast forward. So then we go out, and we're in this store. And I run into this guy, and he has a name tag on, and it says his name is Julius. And I look at him, young man. Young man, I'd say 20 years old. And the Lord told me, he said, he, the Lord gave, he gave me the words to basically say. I said, I said Julius, I said, um, I said, are you saved? He said, what do you mean? I said, Jesus is calling you, Julius. Everybody I mention here, please pray for. Please pray for them. Because we plant seeds. And uh, he said, you mean like baptized and all that stuff? And he said, yeah. He said, I used to do that. Those are the exact words. He said, I used to do that. And I said, well, Jesus is calling you, Julius. And I handed my cell phone. Because everybody was staring at us. And it was getting kind of uncomfortable for them. Not for me. I'm like right where I, where I love being. In the presence of the Lord, I said, "Jesus is calling you, Jesus, uh, Julius." And I, I had my cell phone, and and he, and uh, I said, "I'm a minister. This is what I do." And his mind starts spinning, and he says, "You know what?" He says, uh, "He said, May, maybe there's a reason for this." Bingo, open door, right? So I step right in. I said, "Yeah." I said, because you need to pray to Jesus uh, deeply tonight. He's calling you back before you even go out tonight. 
You need to pray to Jesus. And I said, I don't do this to everybody. Yeah, only to who Jesus tells me to. You knew him. You walked away from him. He wants you back. And he wants you to pray to him tonight. And he said, you know what? He said, I'm going to a concert tonight to meet up with my brother. He said, he said, this is what happened is I'm supposed to pray before I go to that concert and meet up with my brother. I haven't seen my brother in a long time and it could get rough. And that, and that was the end of that. And we went out in the car and I told my wife, Gail, I said, that's the sermon for tomorrow. Lukewarm and backslidden. We just experienced a living sermon in action tomorrow. We're live streaming. Please come tomorrow or, or watch it as a video. That's the sermon. He stepped away from Christ, but in these last days, Christ calling him back. Okay, fast forward. Um, I go back to the place where I told you I found a homeless camp. The tent that had the newborn baby, the whole family with newborn baby, gone. Tent's gone. See, that's why you got to catch them, saints. You got to catch them. Uh, when you can because they're gone. I don't know where they're at Gone tents gone. They're gone. I Found we, we ran into a new guy and uh, And and we witnessed to him and then the guy That was from Roseville, California that relocated here lost everything lost his wife lost his kids Lost his job lost his home and basically lives in an abandoned mall in Linda, California I know where he, uh, he has a hidden spot and he hides and isolates and I found him and the last time I seen him two weeks ago I left him a track and some scriptures and I came and I, I bounded I said there he is and I bounded out of the, the car and I ran over to him and I jumped over this bench and it's like this hollowed out area inside some bushes I said you remember me he goes yeah I gave him a hot meal and uh, we didn't have the bags today we have hot meals and um, I said, did, and I sat down right next to him. He was amazed. And he was glowing. And I said, um, I said, didn't I leave you some stuff to read last time? And he goes, yeah, I read it all. He said, you know what I learned? He said, we in the, what they call the, the end times. And he said, and that's why all this stuff is happening to me. And that's why all this stuff is happening in this world. And that's why you keep coming to me. He said, because we're in the last times. He said, so he said, I made Christ my savior and I'm following Christ. And I said, we, I said, I didn't say much. I said, praise God. I said, you're glowing. I said, people care. Don't ever get to a point where you don't care. He said, they're trying to round us up out here and they're trying to get us to jail. I may have to relocate. He said, because when they do these sweeps, he said, they'll take you to jail. It's against the law to be homeless. And I, he said, I'm not trying to go to jail. I said, I'm going to go home. I'm going to pray for you. And I said, but if you're here next week, I'm bringing blankets. And uh, we got blankets. I, I got blankets coming Tuesday. A whole bunch of stuff coming. Blankets, clothes, beanies, gloves, thick uh, outdoor warmth stuff coming Tuesday. And we're going to go right back out. So I said, I, I, I'll see you Saturday. And, uh, and he said, well, Lord willing. The man got saved and he's walking and talking like a Christian. From one visit with some scriptures and some, some food. Two weeks ago he saved. So those people saying the art door shut and all that. No. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. You've been lied to. It's not shut if I can go out there and do this kind of stuff. So then I ran it. Remember the... Remember the, the veteran with one eye and his wife in a wheelchair? We ran into them. They've relocated. I found them, and we gave them warm meals, and they had a dog. And I told him we're coming out. He told me where he lives. He lives in pallets. He, li he lives in pallets, inside pallets. And he told me where he lives. So next Saturday, I have an appointment to go visit a man who lives in pallets, and we're bringing him blankets, and we, we have a new thing. You can get a 50-pound uh, bag of, I think it's at Costco. My wife got a pedigree dog food for $17. So we got, we got Ziploc one-gallon bags for those who are doing the blessing bags at where you're at. Because this just ain't a us thing. This is a everywhere. So everybody do this thing. Put some dog food in there. And I said, and they had a dog. He said, okay, so I said, you got a blanket to the veteran. 
and uh, he and he said he said all I got is what I'm wearing. He had on like a long sleeve Pendleton, and I'd already given them sweats. He said all, all, all I have is uh, what I got on. I said I'll be back next Saturday. I said I'm bringing you a blanket, and I'm bringing you warm food, and I'm bringing your dog food. They literally couldn't believe it. I said because we care, people care, people care. And then um, I went and I had this idea. And it was, a, it was the craziest idea, but I went with it. So I want to show you that part now. So, you know, if, if you want to support with these blessing bags, we, we, we have that. We're going to make dozens of these bags and we're going to fill them up and it's blankets and uh, it's not cheap. If you want to be a part of this, please be a part of this. Um, I, don't, I don't come in here. They call it e-bagging and stuff, but only two people have given an offering and uh I, I told the Lord this uh this is what I told the Lord I, I took down the GoFundMe I said I'll go in debt through through uh through into January in debt on our credit cards to help these people. If that's what it takes. I don't need no GoFundMe. Either people are gonna give or they're not. I ain't even gonna list a way to give in this video because if if you truly wanted to give, then you would already know how to give. You wouldn't ask you because it's in like several videos how to give. So you're either gonna give or you're not. I, I'll go in debt. I don't care. Do you know how many people? I'm, I'm talking real talk now. Do you know how many people will go in debt so they can buy themselves some stuff in their warm houses? We don't celebrate Christmas here to buy themselves some stuff. You go in debt for that. I'll go in debt. To set up conference rooms. I have two conference rooms now. To give altar calls. Uh, you know. And uh, so that's what I want to discuss next. Is uh, these. I have two conference rooms now. And uh, this flyer I got on my door. So let me pause. And, uh, and share the next part with you. If you just want to hear the homeless part. That's the end of that. Homeless people are not only being fed. And kept warm. And uh, kept alive. But they're getting saved. Okay, so what I did was near the homeless area in Linda, California, which is about 10 minutes from where I'm at right now, um, I booked a conference room. And it has Wi-Fi. We're going to live stream the Sunday service from Linda, California on December 6th. You are welcome to come by if you're local. It's about 30 miles uh, north of, of downtown Sacramento right off of the freeway literally exit and you're there at a, a at a hotel um it's going to be at 12 30 we're going to it's going to be an altar call service it's going to be a lay hands on service we're going to play worship music we're going to live stream it to youtube and then afterwards i'm going to have this i'm going to have the, the the whole car full of blessing bags and if you want to be a part of this you can help us go out and meet the people I've been talking about. There's at least five I know of. We're going to go out. They're literally within, like, say, a quarter mile radius of, of where the service is going to be. You can you can get in the vehicle with me or, or we can just walk. We are going to go and we're going to go bless these homeless people. So we're going to we're going to go hear about the word and then we're going to go do the word. And then the next weekend. So this is confirmed and locked in. I have the room booked. That's that. Uh, the very next weekend in December, on the 12th, I have a conference room booked at a hotel in Medford, Oregon. And we're going to do the same thing. It's called the Siskiyou Room. At 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., we're going to give a word. The Holy Spirit has always given me a word when I asked for it, and it's going to be a word in due season. And then we're going to have an open altar call. Come, want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Want to give your uh, life to Christ, salvation. Want to bring lost family members. Want to rededicate your life. Are you lukewarm and, and want to repent for being lukewarm? Jesus Christ has told me, assured me, he's going to be at that altar. If you show up with a contrite, humble heart, he's going to show up. We're going to live stream that in uh, in Oregon. So, uh, and, and then afterwards, we're going to go out and go uh, feed homeless people. So here's some... I told you my wife got on board on this. You can hear it in my voice. I'm super excited. I was focusing on the food. Look at all the beefaroni. <laughs> Look, a can of beefaroni is a dinner. You guys don't understand. Crackers and, and puddings and these big old cans of Progresso soups for 99 cents. We got toothbrushes now. And we got baby items. We, we're starting special bags 
with the wet wipes, we're starting special bags for pay pe people who are families with babies, and then they'll get like toothbrush and and uh, and this and that. So we're gonna have three separate bags. We're gonna have bags for people who have pets, and then we're gonna have bags for people who have babies, and we're gonna have bags for people that don't have pets or babies. And here's a here's a picture of that dog food I'm telling you about. It's massively huge. So this is what's gonna go out. We're gonna have church service as the church in to in uh, Linda, California, 12:6, and then on 12:12 in Medford, Oregon. This is coast to coast, west coast, and uh, it's Operation SOS, Savior of Souls. That's Jesus Christ, and it's part of the Jesus Matters movement, and I've never been more excited about living for the Lord than I am right now. And um, let me show you one more thing. So those, those dates I will put in the description box. They are set and locked in through the hotel company. It's confirmed date. One more thing. In closing, and I think I did good, we'll have this video in under 20 minutes. Call it a channel update. In closing, I come home super excited, witnessing to lost souls, people rededicating their lives, people being saved, salvation, actually doing what the Bible commands to do, uh, Jesus commanded us to do to the least of the brethren. As we await his turn, and to have a, a homeless person tell us we're in the end times, uh, and uh, I come home and, and I go check the mail and this is what I get. I've been sharing these FEMA envelopes and FEMA letters for three to four years now. And they've escalated and escalated. I want you to see where we're at Bible prophecy. Now it simply says this is the fourth year in a row I've showed a FEMA letter. It says emergency alert. Now what the Lord has told me is the operation here look, is called in California is called Code Red. That's NOAA Satellite. I want you to see the areas they've labeled as storms because who knows when this was printed and I want you to um, pray over those areas it, you know look what look where see that storm there that's where I'm going see the bluest part on the northern part of California on the border of Oregon that's where I'm going <laughs> so for those people who think that I'm enjoying this that's where I'm headed where they're saying it's an emergency and I want you to see the red part in in the middle over here up here, I'm going to read that to you. It says, all conventional home landlines through AT&T are automatically added to the system, the code red system. So uh, they're saying basically you have two options. Let me tell you what's going on here, and then here's the other side. I'm going to tell you what, what's really going on. It says, are you prepared for the winter storm and flood season? It, it, you know, we're, we're in a, doubt, a drought. Uh, it says, A, have you prepared an emergency disaster plan yes I can answer yes to that Two, do you have enough supplies to care for yourselves for at least 72 hours in case of power outages or if an evacuation is necessary and the answer is yes to that so then the the logos here are Homeland Security the county that I live in Office of Emergency Services and and the, the water agency so we go from the flood we go from the drought to the dam breaking and the dam breaking coming right on the part and they talk about preparing for power outage right on I-5 where God told me what happened they are calling it now code red and see so we have we have had direct TV here for 10 years and what happened they started putting up these multi-use towers I've shown pictures of these I've shown pictures of them I'll put a in the in I'll put in the a link in the description box a link to a picture of one they just put up about two blocks from here. It has microwave capabilities, GPS capabilities, cell capabilities, satellite capabilities. They call them multi-use towers. They're to track people. They're going to track the people who are running from the mark of the beast. That, that's what they're for. I'm telling you, you don't need Alex Jones or none of that stuff. I'm telling you, as a background in, uh, in security and in, uh, access control, I know what those are going to for. They're tracking. They're going to tie into the cameras. They have cameras on them. And if you reject the mark of the beast, they'll know where you're at at all times. And if you do have the mark of the beast, they'll know where you're at at all times. They're, they'll track you. And what at and is saying is if you, if you have AT&T, then you're part of the code red system. You're already in the code red system uh, as this emergency alert coming, warning emergency. Are you guys awake yet? I'm going to try to end this in 20 minutes. AT&T just took over DirecTV. 
I said I would never go with AT&T. I have personal reasons for that behind the company I owned and the way they ran my Yellow Pages ads and burned me for a lot of money. But I, I just don't like AT&T. I don't trust the AT&T. I believe CIA is a part of AT&T. Now they've taken over DirecTV. So the only real way I had to stay away from AT&T was keep DirecTV. So what they do, they bought DirecTV. We're talking about satellite service here. So now what they are trying to do is force you into the code red system. And if you have AT&T, you're already in it. Well, according to, to DirecTV, when you, if anybody here have DirecTV in California, when you turn it on, it says part of the AT&T system. They got everybody getting put up and, and set up and marked into this, what they're calling the code red emergency alert system. And you know what that means? The people full of the Holy Spirit, when the restrainer stops restraining, we're out of here. And all you're going to see is videos and pamphlets left behind. And uh, uh, that, that's my watchman warning to you. This stuff's real. This stuff's coming. They're warning you. I'm warning you. Christ is warning you. I've said a lot today. I want you to, to think about everything I just said. So, see you tomorrow, 11 a.m., live streaming.